Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. Today we have a fun one because it is a chatty repot. I'm going to be answering the questions that you submitted on one of my recent community posts. I'm really trying to do Q&As more often. I'd like to do them like every two or three months type of thing. When we do these just casual sit down chatty videos, it just makes me feel a lot more connected to you guys. I don't know, like when, I guess when I'm sharing things that are going on in my personal life, it just builds that relationship a little bit more. I wish that it worked in reverse too. Like I wish that I could, I mean, I guess it kind of does because y'all leave me comments and I love reading them. Anyways, we have the perfect weather for it because I love filming these just like cozy casual videos when it's overcast and gloomy. And that's exactly what we have going on weather wise today, which is so nice. I've got my peppermint tea here. Oh, it's kind of hot. It's kind of hot. And I have my plants already, so I can't wait to show you the, I think, five plants that I've picked out that I'm hoping to get repotted. Um, I have the questions ready. Also, I went through the questions and um, there was a lot. So thank you so much to everyone who submitted a question, but I tried to compile the ones that had like the most thumbs up or that maybe haven't been asked before. You probably won't get through all of them, but I tried to organize them a little bit and group the ones that were more similar together so I could kind of like talk about one topic at a time before we move on to the next question but yeah as always thank you to everyone who submitted a question and i'm so sorry if i don't get to yours i'm really excited to jump into it i'm going to introduce you to all the plants that we're going to be repotting but first i want to say a huge thank you to today's sponsor Today's video is kindly sponsored by Blue Land, and I'm so excited to talk about them because I just love their products so much ever since I started using them about, I think about eight or nine months ago now. If you're not familiar with Blue Land, they offer cleaning products that are friendly to us and also friendly to the planet. Y'all know that I love finding products that are more sustainable, and it's also really important for me to find products that are made with naturally derived ingredients for me to use in my home. So Blue Land is just perfect. So what's cool about Blue Land is that their products come as a little tablet in this cute little compostable packet. You just add this to a reusable bottle full of water, it dissolves, and then it creates the product, the cleaning solution or the hand soap. It is just so freaking cool. There's no plastic waste and all of the packaging is compostable or recyclable. All of their products are free from phosphates, VOCs, chlorine bleach, ammonia, paraben, triclosan, and phthalates. They're also hypoallergenic and made from vegan and non-GMO ingredients. Every product that I've tried from them has worked really well and they're also affordable with the refill tablets starting at just $2.25. And you can save more by buying bulk or you can set up a subscription which can be customized so that you never run out of your most used products. I've been using Blue Land's cleaning sprays religiously, but I think that my favorite product that they offer are the hand soaps because they smell so good. They come in a variety of different scents and they don't dry out my hands or anything. They're just so enjoyable to use. It's also one of the products that I go through the most because I feel like as a plant person, I'm just constantly washing my hands after doing plant chores and things like that. Blue Land currently has their National Parks collection out, which is inspired by all of the unique wonders and ecosystems of the different national parks. It includes a limited edition bottle and four hand soap scents, which are inspired by the parks. There's Glacier, Joshua Tree, Sequoia, and Zion, and they all sound so amazing. Like if you look at the descriptions on their website, I think the one I'm most excited about is Zion. I just love a warm woodsy scent, so comforting. If Blue Land's products sound up your alley, you can use the link in my description box for 15% off of your first kit. Also for every National Parks hand soap kit that is sold, Blue Land is donating $1 to the National Parks Foundation, which is going to support the preservation of those beautiful parks. Thank you so much to Blue Land for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now let's hop into the plants. Okay, I'm gonna show y'all the plants that we are going to be working with today. So the first one is my beautiful Eglionema Manila's Pride. Um, this one has been propagating in perlite for honestly so long, like uh, longer than half a year. It's been, yeah, it took a really long time to root and then it eventually rooted, started growing. I moved it out of the cabinet and now it's just, it's time to be potted. Um, and I'm actually going to be potting it with 
the other one that I have, which they're both so beautiful. I'm so happy that I have this plant. Like it's growing so well for me now. I really struggled at first. I mean, not with this one. This one was good right off the bat, but um, they're both growing so well. There's new leaves emerging on both of them. If you can see the one there, it has a lot of white already visible on the new leaf that's coming. So that's really exciting. This one's a little less variegated, but We'll see, we'll see what happens with her. Um, anyways, like I said, they're gonna be going together to create a larger plant. Um, so that's the plan for these ones. And then another plant that I have really been needing to repot for quite some time now, and I kept putting it off, is my Alocasia Jacqueline. <laughs> She's getting huge. I mean, she only has these two leaves, honestly. I just cut off the third one because it was really drooping and just looked like it was past its prime, but it has these two big, really healthy leaves. And um, yeah, it's doing really well, honestly. It's like standing up so straight because I have it on uh, my new plant shelf behind me. So the lights are like right above it. But yeah, it's loving life. Um, it's just in this small nursery pot still. I got this as quite a small, like it was fairly juvenile when I got it. So it's kind of crazy that in less than a year it's um, sized up so much. But yeah, I'm so glad that it's doing well because it truly is just such a unique alocasia. The petioles are huge and they have a really cool pattern to them. Yeah, everything about this plant is just amazing. So I'm going to be popping this into a larger container today. And then I'm gonna be repotting another one that really is overdue for a repot. I mean, as far as I can tell, and that is my philodendron Bromarks variegata. It's supposed to be, but half of it, probably more than half of it, like two thirds of it is reverted, but we do have, um, partial like some of the leaves are variegated or I guess some of the vines I should say. My plan I think for when this gets to the top of the pole is just to propagate the variegated pieces and try to start another plant that's just variegated. Um, but it's super rooted in here. You can see the roots starting to kind of coil around the bottom and it needs water quite often. So these are both signs that it's time to repot it. So we're gonna be working on that one. And it's always kind of fun to repot larger plants. Do y'all find? Let me know if you like repotting small plants or if you like repotting large plants more. It just, I don't know. I kind of enjoy doing the larger ones. It just feels a little bit more exciting when they're not a huge pain in the butt because sometimes they are. But I feel like this is gonna be fairly simple because it's attached to the pole. So I don't have to like worry about staking anything. It's already just good to go. And then I'm also finally going to be repotting my Monstera siltipicana, which this poor thing, I've neglected it so much. And I just, you know, I need to get my act together here because I love this plant. I think that it's so pretty. I love when I see other people have like full pots of this or climbing ones. I just think it's gorgeous. It has such a beautiful leaf and I really wanna see mine do well. But unfortunately it's been living in this terracotta pot that dries out so much and it's just this one singular vine. So step one for fixing this plant up today is just to repot it into plastic because terracotta is just, it's just not the vibe, at least not for this plant. I can't keep up with the watering with it in this pot. So yeah, we're gonna be going with plastic. And then lastly, we're going to be repotting my Alocasia cuprea who is literally crawling with beneficial mites right now. There's so many on it on the front and the back. Like they are really just having a heyday on this plant right now. But this I've put off repotting for so, so long to the point where the pot is like warping. I don't think it was tell, but the bottom is sticking out. Um, so it won't even sit flat. That's why I have it in the cover pot. It will just tilt like that because this is sticking out so much. So there's either a corm or like the root ball or something going on there. I don't know, but what I do know is that she needs to be repotted. It's also drying out so, so quickly. So yeah, really looking forward to getting that into a larger pot. This is the new leaf, isn't that so pretty? Oh my goodness, I love this plant. I love alocasia in general. They're just so gorgeous. Okay, so that is all of them. We actually have a really good variety this time. We have an Aglionema, two Alocasia, 
one philodendron, and one monstera. That's a pretty good spread. So I'm going to get set up with my potting mat and then we are going to start with the first question. Okay, I'm gonna do my best to get both the plant and myself in the frame. I think that I'm gonna start with the Aglionema. So let's grab that one. Let's get my pot ready. I think this size should work well. Okay, so the first question, and this was the one that I believe had the most likes, and it says, I would very much like to know a little bit more about Olive, her adoption story, her favorite things, etc. My dog is my baby, and I talk about her all the time, so I love when others talk about their dogs. Okay, so I have had Olive for 10 years. I've almost had her for her whole life. They guessed that she was around three to four months old when, um, when I adopted her and I was freshly 21 and had just moved here to Vancouver Island from the prairies. I'd literally just moved here like the month prior and I don't know, I was just lonely. I was a little bit homesick. And in my little 21 year old brain, I figured what is the cure for that? Obviously it is adopting a dog. I knew that it had to be a rescue, but I just wanted, you know, like a small little chihuahua cross and I wanted it to be a girl dog. So that was basically my criteria. So I started looking around for rescues and I came across one. I don't even really remember what it was called, but they went to different parts of the world and rescued dogs and then brought them back here to be adopted. So Olive actually came from California and um, yeah, I kind of picked her out from a photo before I even met her. And then I went to pick her up. I remember being so, so excited and she was just a little and very shy, very sweet, but very shy. And yeah, that was pretty much that. So at the time I was just working like part-time as a server and um, sorry, this is a hard story for me to tell while focusing on plants at the same time but I was just working part-time as a server. I didn't really know what I was gonna be doing because I had applied to nursing school, but I didn't get in. So my mom lived here, by the way. I moved here and moved in with my mom and um, I didn't get into nursing school. So my plan B was just kind of like, I don't know, work wherever I could find work. So I was um, waiting tables and then I adopted Olive and I was just, you know, living my little puppy mom life. And then literally like two weeks later, I got a call that a seat had opened up for me um, in nursing school. So, so it was such a crazy time. I was completely unprepared. You know, the other people in my class had known that they were going to be, that they were like in and gonna be starting like, you know, half a year in advance, but I. I had no idea I had to scramble to you know figure out money get all my textbooks um, I was so lucky to be living with my mom because she obviously helped out with Olive a lot and I just um, wouldn't have been able to do both like to have a brand new puppy and to be starting such an intensive schooling program but I was very lucky that that um, my mom was there to help me and she also adopted a puppy at the same time. They came from the same rescue. She came with me to pick up Olive from the place and then there was another dog there that she fell in love with so she ended up coming home with a dog too. We came home with two. <laughs> so um, they kind of like grew up together which is nice. But yeah, that's kind of the story of me getting her. I'm just gonna add this soil into here. I'm sure I'm missing a lot of details but I'm trying to keep it brief here. Um, her favorite things, she loves playing with toys, like playing fetch and just like, you know, kind of like roughhousing. She's a very um, feisty kind of player when she plays. She loves food. That's literally like her favorite thing. She's a very, very food motivated dog. Carrots are one of her favorite foods. She's obsessed. Anytime I'm cutting carrots, literally she'll hear from across the house if I start slicing a carrot and she'll come running out. Ooh, I have a feeling this is gonna be hard to get out. I have a bad feeling. <laughs> it feels very <laughs> in there. Uh, this is what happens when you use these like mason jars with the smaller mouth. The mouth is more narrow than the body of the jar. Okay, let's try to get this out. Um. She loves to cuddle, she loves to sleep. She's a very cozy queen. Something that people might not know about Olive just from videos is that she's very, 
um, like anxious and protective around new people. She's not aggressive or anything. Like she's, she'd never bite someone or anything, but like if there's a knock at the door or somebody new is coming over, she's very protective of me and is one of those dogs that will be barking a lot. I think maybe that's just the chihuahua in her, but yeah. And she's a, a mixed breed that, um, you know, looks like she has chihuahua in her but I'm not really sure what else. I've always wanted to do one of those dog breed DNA kits. If anyone's done that, leave a comment and let me know because I really wanna try that and see what it would come back with for Olive just because I don't actually know what breeds she has in her. I was thinking maybe I would order it and do it for my blog channel. I think that that would be really fun. Anyways, yeah, I could literally talk about Olive forever. I love her so much. She's my actual child. Um, I'm gonna try to get this out of here before I move on to the next one. Definitely well-rooted, so that's good. Oh, the water's coming out too. Okay, I think it's gonna come out. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, there is a lot of roots on here. Holy smokes. Let me get some of this perlite off. I'm pretty impressed by this. I feel like it took a long time to really see roots in there, but I guess some of them just aren't that long, but there's a lot of them. Like a very well-rooted, dense root system. Look at that. Like that looks so good. Oh my goodness. I accidentally broke two, I think that these are little growth points like that are gonna shoot off a new little baby plant and I accidentally broke two of them off from the other parts which sucks but it was just so hard to get the plant out from there. I love the leaves on this thing. So pretty. Um, okay so let's go ahead and get this situated. So the next question is when and how did you decide to get a cabinet for your plants? How is it working for you? Is it hard or easy to maintain? Thanks. I love Q&A repotting videos. Thank you. Okay, so when did I get the cabinet? I believe it was 2020, like fall of 2020. And um, I just, this was around the time that people were like, well, from what I saw, when people were really just first starting to post about them. And I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. Like I had never seen it before. And then I saw the odd person, like one or two people post about it. I remember Planterior Decorator, she was like one of the first people that I saw post it. And I basically like copied her setup when I first set mine up. But I just thought that it was so cool that there was an option to, like a way to not only display my plants nicely, but to create an environment that they would really thrive in, like humidity wise and everything. And with grow lights, it just seemed like the total package for being able to keep the types of house plants I was growing successfully. Okay, I think that that's gonna be good placement wise for them. Now I just need to fill this up with, I'm gonna reuse some of this soil that's down here still. And then how did you decide to get a cabinet? Yeah, I just thought that it was super cool. As soon as I saw it, I was like, I want to do that. <laughs> So I um, ended up ordering, I think I ordered, I had to order my Mills Botol, this one behind me. It was the first cabinet that I got. I had to order it online because there's not an Ikea here on the island and I ordered it to a pickup point. And then I went to, yeah, I went to go pick it up in my city and then brought it back and my friends helped me build it and everything. It's so nice to look back on those memories. I feel like I've had this cabinet for a while now. So it's just like cute to think of when I first got it. As for the rest of the question, how's it working for you? Is it hard or easy to maintain? It's working amazingly. My plants in there love it. I'm actually so, so happy with the way that this one in particular is set up. I did a video not too long ago on my channel giving like an updated tour of this cabinet. I have a whole playlist if you're interested in the Ikea greenhouse cabinet, but I did a whole tour of it. And um, yeah, I'm just, I'm so just content with how it's looking right now. So yeah, I, I love it and I find it super easy to maintain. Once everything's set up, it's just, it's set up, you know? 
at least mine is because I've got everything automated. The lights turn on automatically, um, the fans, usually they run 24 seven. Right now I have them turning off at night just because it was so hot, but I'm gonna switch them back to 24 seven soon. I typically have to water plants a little bit less frequently in there. So it's less maintenance than the plants, the rest of my plants that are just like out in the open because this cabinet maintains a higher humidity. So yeah, it's honestly fantastic. I love my cabinet and I definitely recommend. Oh, and there was another question. Actually, let me talk about this potting mix that I'm gonna be using first. So I'm gonna be using a potting mix that is actually fairly new to me, and it's the Very Plants Molly's Aeroid Mix. I had seen this popping up everywhere on Instagram. A lot of people love this mix, so of course I had to try it out. I've used it for one of my Ethereum already, and it's doing amazing. I can already see roots. I potted it into a bigger pot, and I can already see roots new root growth so yeah so far so good with that but i really want to test it on more of my plants obviously so i thought i would use it today on some of these ones it's nice and chunky but it also seems like it holds a pretty good amount of moisture as well so it's not like it's not like something like my crystal star mix which is just super super airy and chunky and you kind of have to water that a little bit more frequently this definitely seems like it's going to which is great for specific plants i'm kind of thinking a little bit more these days about the mixes that i put each plant in depending on you know its location its growth habit like how quickly it grows type of thing um and the pot it's in i'm just trying to critically think a little bit more about that so i think that this is going to be a really great mix for this eglunema just based on what i've observed with it care wise over the past almost year that i've had one so I'm just going to fill that up and um, oh yeah I was going to answer this question which I grouped with that Ikea greenhouse cabinet question um, because it's also about the cabinet and it says have you ever thought of building a living wall in one of your Ikea cabinets and I've had this question before and honestly no I don't think that that's for me like I just like having my individual potted plants in there I, it looks like a lot of work and I honestly just don't think I would enjoy it. Like it, I just don't think that that's my style of growing necessarily. I feel like it's really cool when other people have that going on in their homes and they like style it really nicely and everything, but I just don't think that it's for me. I'm super happy with the way that my cabinet is. So I'm just gonna continue with my individually potted plants. Okay, and then I ended up getting a lot of questions about like buying a home and the process and something on my notes and home ownership in general. Any tips for those of us who are looking to buy a house? It seems really intimidating trying to buy a house right now. Uh, yeah, it is very intimidating and it was a very stressful process. I'm not going to lie. I'm honestly really glad that that whole phase is done because it was not good for me. It was not good for my anxiety. Um, but yeah, the hardest part of home ownership so far has just been feeling overwhelmed. Like, I feel like there's just so much that I n not only need to do, but want to do. And I really need to take a step back and like tell myself that I, I don't need to put pressure on myself to have everything done and have everything looking the way that I want it to immediately. And I've had a lot of people uh, remind me of that which is really nice because I truly do need to be reminded um, I don't I need to let go of feeling like rushed to do everything like you know there's just so many little projects I want to do there's so much I want to do to the yard I obviously um, really want to get a garden going that's one of the big reasons that I wanted to buy a house and yeah there's just so much and it's very easy to get overwhelmed by it so so yeah, just being just being overwhelmed in general because there's a list of things that truly do need to be done and repairs that need to be made on top of just the my own pressures that I put on myself to have everything a certain way. Um, and then any tips? Honestly, I'm not a great person to ask. Like I feel like I just had no idea what was going on the whole time. Um, my tip would be find a good realtor because ours was so, so helpful. We were joking that he was like our dad because we were literally just like calling him and texting him and asking him so many questions all the time. We felt like we were very needy, but he was so nice and so understanding and really just helped guide us through 
the whole process. So that was really nice. And also just spend time shopping around, not only for the house, but also for things like your mortgage, because your interest rate is going to make a really big difference in your payments. So if you're in the early stages, I would recommend just doing a lot of research. Lucky for me, my partner did a lot of that side of things. Like he was the one that was really finding out about everything and figuring out how things worked and finding like the tax benefits and the, the like savings accounts that we needed and things like that. I'm very lucky that I had somebody who kind of took on a lot of that because, oh my goodness, I was already so stressed without being like the main person who was doing all of that research, which kind of answers another question that was asked. Um, people are asking whether I bought this house on my own or whether I bought it with my boyfriend. And yes, we bought it together 50-50 and I truly would not be in the position of being able to own a home if it wasn't that way. So I'm just very grateful that we were able to do that together. Okay, I think this one is done. Look at this, oh my gosh, a nice lush pot of Eglionema Manila's Pride. I'm so excited to watch this grow. Imagine what it's gonna look like once it's like really filled out. This is gonna be such a stunning plant. Oh my goodness, I need to find a cute cover pot for this like immediately. I'm so, so happy with this. Ah, I love it. Yeah, first one down. Yeah, just different questions about the buying process. I know it's just such an awful time to try to get into the housing market and we are really lucky that we were able to. What did you do for preparation, mentally and financially? I feel like I was not mentally prepared. It happened very quickly. It happened more quickly than we thought it was going to. Um, like I thought that we were gonna be looking for much longer, but it just kind of, it just all kind of started happening. Um, and financially, obviously just saving money for a long time. Like we both saved money for years to be able to uh, afford the down payment and all the closing costs and everything. It's obviously like very, very expensive. Um, to buy a house right now and with where we live it's expensive and everything so another question that someone asked was your videos are all filmed in the second floor in the living room or kitchen what is the first floor of your house and do you use your garden will you make a house tour so this floor this like main space that y'all see me in this is the only floor this is a single level dwelling so there's only one floor and the reason it's not ground level, it's a little bit higher, is because there's a crawl space underneath. So that's not, um, it's not technically like another level of the house because it's, it's just, it's not full height and it's basically just storage. So yeah, there's not even like a proper stairwell to get down there or anything. So it's only one level. This is it. <laughs> I do plan to use my garden eventually once I get that going, which it's gonna take so much work, you guys. Oh my goodness. There's so many animals here, so many deer, and we're gonna have to not only fence the yard, but also put a deer fence around the garden beds. And yeah, it's gonna be a whole huge project that's probably gonna span over, you know, many years. <laughs> it's like all the projects here are probably just gonna be ongoing for a really long time. So yeah. I really want to do planning for that stuff over the winter and then hopefully we'll get going with some of it like closer to the spring. But again, I'm just really overwhelmed by it. I've never done anything like this before. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. But I am very, very excited to eventually have my garden going. Next plant. Let's do the Jacqueline next because look at her. I'm obsessed. There's a stone, oh, there's two stones in here. I think that this is lapidolite. And this just looks like clear quartz. Very cute. I'm gonna pull her out. I have no idea what the roots are looking like on this gal. Oh, oh my goodness, they look good. I wonder if there's any corms. Repotting alocasia is so fun to see if there's corms. I don't see any. It's okay if there's not, but it's always really fun to find one. No, I don't see any, and I don't really want to disturb her. Let's get a pot ready. I think I'm just gonna do, I was debating just putting it in this one actually. This like, um, just white pot. No, I'll put her in here for now, and then I wanna get a cute cover pot for her eventually. 
The next question is, I'm curious about the plants no longer in your collection and why. For example, I recall you purged your Melanochrysum in McDowell. I hope your Florida beauty makes a reappearance. Um, so I think that it was, bef I posted this um, Q&A thing before I posted my video where I chopped up my Florida beauty and it croaked. So you've probably seen the update on that by now. So yeah, my Florida beauty just completely reverted and I chopped it up and then all of the cuttings just either grew reverted or rotted. So I unfortunately don't have that plant anymore, which kind of sucks because I mean, it's still pretty expensive and, and kind of unattainable, not unattainable, but you just, it's not super commonly available and prices haven't, prices have come down, but it's still like, I don't know. It's still just a more expensive plant. So it's too bad that mine died because I do really like that plant. Um, so my Melanochrysum and McDowell, I got rid of both of those just because they were so annoying to grow. My McDowell did this thing that where the leaves were always creased, like they never just emerged nicely. And it also just didn't really look like there's always comments um, arguing on, not arguing, but like saying that it wasn't a McDowell. And then people said it was a McDowell and I don't know, it just, it didn't have, it didn't have the characteristics of what I would like a McDowell to look like. Like I see other people's and they look really nice and mine was just not really that. So based on those things, I just decided, you know, I don't really want this plant in my collection anymore. It's taking up a lot of room because it was big. So I was like, see you later. And same thing with my Melanochrysum. It just, it was so annoying to grow. They're so hard to size up from small plants. I do love it. Like I freaking adore the Melanochrysum and I would love to have one. But if I do get one again, I'm going to buy it larger so that it's already like has some size to it because it's just too hard to size them up from small plants. Um, so yeah, that's my thoughts on that. I feel like a package just came here. Just a sec. Never mind, it was just the garbage truck. Okay. Let me fill this one up now. What happened to your cactus garden? I sold that when I moved like two moves ago. I haven't had it for a while, but yeah, I really like that. And also somebody else asked, um, haven't seen your cacti in ages. They're living outside. So if you watch my, my um, patio video that I posted, I do a little tour in the first part of that video and you can see my cactus but they've been living outside for the summer, so that might be why you haven't seen them recently, but yeah, they are here. Next question, what kind of nursing did you do and for how long? I'm curious about this part of your history as a planting nurse myself. Also so happy that you're able to leave. I can't wait to get out of healthcare. Mm. I hope that you're able to get out sometime soon as well. I know how draining healthcare can be, um, especially if you, if, you, if you don't enjoy it, if it's not for you, which was the case for me, unfortunately. Um, what kind of nursing did I do? I just worked like general medicine. So the floor that I worked on was um, the stroke floor. So we got all of the strokes. Plus we just got a lot of various other things. A lot of just like, I don't know, respiratory um, and just a little bit of everything. But in my last um, like half a year of working as a nurse, we were turned into just, we were called like the respiratory investigative unit or something. So we were basically the COVID floor. Um, and yeah, it was very stressful to, I don't know how, like what, how we drew the short stick for my floor to be turned into that because it was just a very, obviously at the beginning of the panini, it was just very stressful, very um, like tensions and emotions were very high when nobody really knew what was going on. It was still a very new thing. And I remember going to work and just being so scared. It was just, yeah, a very stressful time. Um, so, so that was just kind of like the cherry on top before I left. And I was already, and I was so lucky to already be doing YouTube just on the side and that was going really well for me. So I was able to leave, um, which I'm honestly, I'll always be so, so grateful for that because it's, I mean, it's so hard being stuck in a career that you don't want to do. And even more so than that, I just felt like it wasn't fair to patients and even to my coworkers. It wasn't fair to them that my heart wasn't in it and I didn't love what I was doing. Like if somebody is in that field, I feel like you really truly have to love and be passionate about what you're doing. 
and I just wasn't. I wasn't happy there. It was a toxic work environment and um, unfortunately I feel like that's the case for a lot of people but anyways I don't want to ramble too much but um, yeah I, I was a registered nurse for four years to answer your question and um, yeah I have a lot of reasons to why I left but overall I'm just really glad that I did and I'm really happy now. Need my little chopstick to really get this down there. The next question is, I would like to know how are you today? How's your mental health? Last winter was really hard for me and my mental health and I struggle with, with insomnia. I watched all your old videos at night because your presence is so calming. I'm so sorry to hear that you had a hard winter. Um, insomnia is the worst and I had never really struggled with it until this year. And I remember, I, you know, I struggled with anxiety for like pretty much my whole life and I would always think like, oh, I'm glad that I've never struggled with insomnia. Like that would really suck to not be able to sleep. And then this year it came for me. <laughs> so yeah, I really empathize with that. It is not fun at all, not being able to sleep and then just being like so tired. Your body's exhausted, but your mind just won't shut off. Anyways, to answer your question, I'm doing well. Um, I feel like my mental health is okay. I'm not gonna lie, it's not the best. My anxiety has really been flaring up pretty much this whole year. Um, and with just how crazy it was with the move and everything, I really let a lot of my healthy habits that had improved my anxiety a lot, I really let them go just because I would, I've been so busy and everything but I'm actually starting to prioritize those habits again. So I've been doing my meditation. Um, I've, I've slowly started getting back into running and doing some yoga. Those things helped me so much. Running like literally saved me from seasonal depression last winter. I, it was the best winter that I've had when it comes to depression. And I honestly attribute that to my running ritual routine whatever you want to call it regimen so so that's why I'm really starting to get back into my running right now because I can just like feel my anxiety just really like ramping up and I don't want to go into the winter like that so yeah I really need to push myself to get back into some of those routines that I know are really good for me okay so that is going to be good for this one, I think. There are a couple gaps, but kind of hard to fill. Okay, there we go. Alocasia Jacqueline is all done. Um, again, I'm gonna have to find cover pots for these plants. I'm really in my cover pot era. I'm really enjoying finding cute pots for my plants. It makes such a big difference. Next question says, a little nosy, just curious to know how the transition has been going from having your own space for a while to sharing one again, how it's changed your routines, work, etc. Oh my goodness, the sunshine is coming out. Um, <clears throat> I kind of wanted it to stay gloomy, but it looks like the clouds are breaking a little bit and the sun's coming out. Um, it has been a transition, honestly, like it's, it's just a lot different living with someone and yeah, I don't know. It, like, I do miss living by myself, but I also obviously love living with my partner. And um, yeah, I guess it's just, it's it just really is that, just adapting to new routines and trying to figure out what works for both of you. So for me, I, I it affects my work schedule a lot because before when I'm by myself, I'm the only person in the house. I can just like do things whenever I want. But now I have another person to consider and obviously we want to prioritize like doing things together and stuff but and then obviously it's harder to film when he's home. I do still film sometimes when he's home but it's just harder with noise and everything so I, I just try to schedule things appropriately. But yeah, it's obviously, it's a lot different living with a partner than living alone and um, I think that there's benefits to both. Like it's convenient in a lot of ways, not only like obviously sharing expensive and every expenses and everything, but just sharing tasks as well. Like he helps out so much with Olive, you know, walking the dogs, um, taking care of them, and um, I do other things. He has his tasks that he does, and I have my tasks that I do to kind of keep the household functioning. So it is nice to 
have someone to divide the labor with, I suppose. But, um, but yeah, it is just like obviously a different vibe. Okay, next, let's do the little Silta Picana. I kind of feel like doing a little plant right now. Um, this has two yellow leaves that I'm just going to remove. Time to go. Oh my gosh, yeah, it is just like so sunny now. Sorry, I hope the lighting is okay. Okay, the next question I've gotten a lot, especially on Instagram, I miss seeing your rainbows on the wall slash floors. Where's your rainbow maker and how and where can we get a similar one? So my rainbow sun catchers are still on my windows here. It's just that the rainbows only happen in certain seasons. So they typically happen in spring and summer. And it's just because the sun has to be low enough in the sky to really like cast the the rainbows inside, you know? So they're, they are starting up a little bit more, but I do need to put some more sun catchers on my windows because I obviously just have more windows now. Before my... Um, my rainbow sun catchers were only in a, on a space on a window like this big. So they were very concentrated and they made that like very dramatic rainbow effect. But now here, they're a lot more spaced out. So I need to get more of them. Um, but they do, they do rainbow in here sometimes. It's just not, I think that they'll be more noticeable in the fall, but they also don't cast onto a specific wall. They just kind of like come into the house. So it's probably gonna be less dramatic. I do miss the way that the rainbows looked in my old house. I love them so much. Um, I'll link them down in the description. Um, they're called, they're from Rainbow Symphony, I believe, the ones that I've had, but I've recently gotten a couple of new ones that are so cute as well that I'm going to put up soon. So you'll see those. I'll share them on Instagram or show them on here, but, um, really any sun catcher like window cling that you can put on a window where the sun actually comes through will give you the rainbow effect. Okay, let's get this gal out of here. I'm hoping that her roots are gonna look okay because honestly, this plant dries out so much. Like it's always dry. <clears throat> let's see. I mean, they look a little dry, like a little brittle, <laughs> especially the tips, but I think that they're okay. Um, I mean, she's still growing. So I'm just gonna say that they're okay. We are going to go ahead and put her in plastic though. I'm using like the same pot for all of these. Honestly, I could probably use this Manila's Pride one for her, but no, I'll give her a bigger one just so she can have more space to grow. The next question is, is it hard to decide what to share on the internet and what you don't want to share other than your plants? How do you balance your personal life and social media? Much love from California. Um, to be honest, I find it very difficult to balance and I feel like I've kind of like swung from opposite sides on the pendulum as um Okay, I'm sorry. My battery keeps dying today. Oh my goodness, but I just plugged in my camera So we're good now. Although I do have to leave to drive my mom to an appointment in about five minutes So we're just gonna do this for five more minutes and then I will be back to Continue filming this but I really want to get this potted up because it's just like hanging out here drying out um so what was i saying oh yeah um i feel like i've really swung from one end of the pendulum where i i was just like i don't know i would just share whatever i was a lot more comfortable i didn't really feel like much was off limits and now i just feel like i have a lot more boundaries and I'm a, a lot more aware of what I'm sharing and what I'm saying and maybe that comes with age or maybe that is a byproduct of cancel culture and like fear of being perceived a certain way. I don't know, but all I know is that I feel a lot more hesitant to share things now, which in a way kind of sucks because there are certain things that, you know, I would like to share but i just um i just don't like my relationship i i talked a lot about that before and i just kind of realized that i don't want to subject my relationship to the criticism of a bunch of people online like i don't think that i can handle that so that's why i don't talk about it or like share details of my relationship anymore like y'all know that i'm in a relationship but i'm not like as far as like sharing my partner online and stuff i'm just i don't think i'm going to be doing that i mean maybe i'll change my mind in the future but right now 
I just, and I do share more on my vlog channel and I obviously share, I'm like much more open with things on my Patreon because that's just like a small community that's not public. So it's just, um, it's easier to share things in that type of setting. But um, yeah, I do find it hard to balance the two. I find it hard to separate the two in like, in more ways than just that too. Like I find that my work just bleeds into my personal life so much. It's really hard to, it's really hard to find boundaries and to decide like what's work and what's just like my own things for my enjoyment. So yeah, I really need to figure out like a more clear cut um, work schedule, like time-wise and just better boundaries. That's something that I really need to work on and I've been saying that for a while, but it really is something that I need to prioritize. Um, but yeah, so I do, I do definitely struggle with that. Anyways, this guy is now potted up. So I am going to leave y'all there and then we will pick back up when I'm back. And this is what he's looking like. Kind of janky, honestly. I need to um, cut him and propagate, but I'm just gonna wait until he establishes a little bit more in this pot because I don't want to like have him dealing with the shock of the repot and then the shock of like him being completely chopped up. So yeah, he's just looking like that for now, but trust me, eventually this plant is gonna look good. One day, one day it's gonna look good. <laughs> Okay, hello, I am back. I just dropped my mom off at her appointment and I also moved the plants that I already potted over to the sink and gave them the water because I realized they're just sitting here in a dry potting mix and it's probably not great for the root system. So I just gave them a little water and now we're gonna move on to the next one. Okay, let's get back in the zone. I always feel like when I first start filming a video, I'm a little bit choppy and then I kind of get into it, like find my groove a little bit, but now I've been disrupted. So we need to, we need to get into video mode again. But I also, <laughs> I have to go pick my boyfriend up from work in 20 minutes. I'm just, I'm a chauffeur today. I truly am. Um, but we're just working around it because I have a lot of stuff I'm trying to get done today, so I just have to use all the available time that I have. I feel like I genuinely have a problem with my time management skills because I thought I was gonna be done filming this video this morning. We're already going into the afternoon, and would y'all believe that I got up at 4 a.m. this morning? Yes, 4 a.m. because I knew I had a lot of stuff to get done and I feel like I'm way behind schedule already. So side note, if anyone has cracked the code on time management, time blocking, scheduling, just anything to make life run more efficiently, let me know because I genuinely would love to hear it. We are moving on to the next plant, which is going to be the Burl Marks. Look at how good she looks. Like what the heck? She actually looks kind of good. She's so bushy. Um, yeah, okay. Let's figure out what pot I'm gonna be using. I think I'm gonna have to go up one size, probably this gal right here. I think that these pots, all the ones I'm using today, came from Crystal Star Nursery. I ordered a bunch of clear pots from them recently. So the next question is, I've often wondered about your dad. You talk about your mom a lot. Just wondering if he's around and what your relationship is like. If that's your personal, I understand. Much love. Um, yeah, it's true. I do only talk about my mom because my dad isn't in my life and he hasn't ever really been. We were in touch for a couple of years when I was in high school, but other than that, he, yeah, uh, he's just, he's not really in my life. I don't hear from him. I probably haven't heard from him in around 10 years now. It's just, it's just that kind of vibe. I'm sure that a lot of y'all can relate. I'm not upset about it or anything. Like, I feel like not having a dad is just my norm. Like, it's honestly kind of crazy for me to think that some people have two parents, like, consistently in their life. Like, that's just, I can't imagine how incredible that is. But yeah, it's just not the case for me. And I'm fine with it. I do get sad sometimes. Like, if, if I'm reading a book or watching a movie, 
that is about a dad or some like you know father daughter relationship or something sometimes my daddy issues will come out then and i'll get emotional but um other than that like it just is what it is and sometimes when i need help with things like um for example i was talking about this when we were moving recently like i was just all the stuff that we had to deal with that comes along with moving and i remember trying to repair my old place that i moved out from i had to like fill the holes in the walls and paint and it was just not going right and i was getting so stressed and i remember i just kept thinking like i wish i had a dad like i wish i had a dad that i could call to come help me but you know i don't and that's fine it just is what it is i'm very lucky to have my mom and um yeah Ooh. oh my goodness okay all right so yeah he's definitely very rooted you can see that they're coiling around the bottom there so yeah oh my goodness actually i need to make a little bit more room in here there we go this is a good size up for him the next question is also an interesting one I think I've heard you describe yourself as an introvert. Me too. How are you able to make the leap to YouTube? How do you deal with privacy slash parasocial relationship of it all? It's funny because I feel like people have this misconception that you have to be this really um, like outgoing, loud, well-spoken person to do YouTube. And I just genuinely don't think that's the case. Um, many of my favorite creators are introverts, people that just create like cozy, comforting content. That's what I really love. And um, it's funny because my mom is also an introvert and we're both just like socially anxious people. And um, she has said the same thing to me. She's like, oh, like, I don't know how you can do that. Like talk to talk to your audience. And, and I'm like, well, you know, it's it's completely different than if I were talking to a crowd of real people. Like I'm literally sitting in my house by myself talking to the camera. It's It feels very relaxed. Um, and yeah, it would be different obviously if y'all were actually sitting in front of me, but there's not a crowd of thousands of people in front of me. It's just me in my own comfortable environment. So, um, so really it's like the ideal job for an introvert because I'm working by myself and on my own terms and um yeah i remember being anxious about starting youtube and like being worried about what people would think i don't think that's really an introvert thing i think that was just my own anxiety thing um but yeah i don't know i just decided to do it because i really wanted to do it i've been watching youtube for so many years yeah, I've been watching YouTube for over a decade, so it was always something that I was really interested in, I really admired, and um, I just appreciated the whole like creative process of it, so I just decided I was gonna do it, that was that, and nobody cared. <laughs> so, yeah. How do you deal with the privacy slash parasocial relationship of it all? Um, like I was saying before, I'm just like keeping more boundaries now when it comes to what I share from my life. But yeah, good question. And there was a related one that I grouped here that said, how did your friends and family react when you started doing YouTube? And yeah, I honestly don't think anybody really cared. Like when you first start, start doing YouTube, every, first of all, people don't really get it and people still don't really get it. Like I honestly, a lot of people that know me would have no idea what I do on a daily basis for work and just, it's still a very new thing to a lot of people. So I just, yeah, I feel like a lot of people are just kind of like, think I just, um, um, I don't know. I don't even know. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of people just like don't get it. Because unless you watch YouTube, like unless you're in this little world and especially videos about plants, like people are like, what are you talking about? Unless you're a viewer, it's just hard to wrap your head around. So I try to explain it to people, but for the most part, I don't think it was this like big shocking thing. I don't think it was a big deal for people when I first started doing YouTube. And I don't think at that time, anybody would have expected that it would, it would be something that I'm still doing and it would be something that's like grown into what it is now. And that's become my job. But yeah, I remember being really anxious and like self-conscious and like thinking people would judge me for starting YouTube. This is back when I was still in school though. And that that's just like different times. Like I was younger and you know, because I've done YouTube 
before I even started doing like plant videos. I used to just do like vlogs and, and um, different types of videos, which have all been privated from my channel now. <laughs> the next question is, how do you keep fungus gnats at bay? What are your favorite teas? How do you have it? Okay, for some reason I was thinking, <laughs> favorite teas since it was asked right after the fungus nap thing i was thinking like mosquito bit tea <laughs> oh my gosh but no it's two separate questions um so how do you keep fungus gnats at bay well for some reason i haven't had fungus gnats since i've moved but before that i was doing the mosquito mosquito dunk thing so i was putting mosquito dunks in my water that i was using to water all my plants and i had to be consistent with that for about six weeks before i saw results but it took care of them like the fungus gnats were gone and I haven't seen them since. And I think I haven't seen them now because it's just my plants are drying out so much because it's been so much hotter, so much warmer and um, so much brighter. So I just really haven't had the issue of my plants staying moist, you know? So I haven't had an issue, but the, the mosquito dunks were really effective for me. And then as for my favorite teas, I love just red rose with some oat milk and um, coconut sugar. I love peppermint tea, green tea. Honestly, I love most teas. I'm a really big, not a really big, but I enjoy a good cup of tea. And I have my nighty night extra tea before bed with valerian. Yeah, love teas. I really need to get back into just drinking tea and not drinking coffee because I honestly don't feel like coffee does me any favors. <laughs> like I, I feel like I'm just better off to be drinking tea and I need to get that into my brain. Okay, next, I guess this is the last one, the Alocasia cupria. So we are going to be upgrading this pot. I'm so curious to see what's in here because it's like literally bulging, like I said. Maybe the pot's just doing that, I don't know, but I feel like the plant is pushing that out. So, you know, I could probably use this pot for it. Maybe I'll do that. I get really nervous about my Alocasia, about potting them up in too large of a pot. So I'm just gonna do that, just a little size up but actually I'm gonna put some potting mix in here and then we'll take a peek. The next question is, do you have hobbies outside of plants and reading? As a serial hobbyist, I need to know. And I love this question because I love hobbies and I truly wish I had time to do more of them. But honestly, I feel like plants and reading take up most of my time. There's just so many just like life maintenance things that I do. Like I cook almost all meals at home um i am trying to get back into my exercise routine like those things alone take up so much of my day taking care of the dogs like i said my partner walks the dogs a lot but i do go sometimes as well yeah just like balancing life and work and caring for 200 house plants and also trying to um sneak in time to read i feel like that's like pretty much all my time right there but honestly, I would love to try more cozy hobbies. Like I would do, I would love to try out more like artsy things. And um, I really wanted to learn to like crochet or something like that. I think that that would be so fun. But right now I don't really feel like I have any other hobbies. I mean, I guess food I would say would be my like, I don't know if I would say that's a hobby, but it's definitely an interest like food and cooking. But yeah, I would love to hear everyone's hobbies though. Like, please go down. If you're still here watching this video, go down and leave me a comment because I love hearing about people's hobbies. So I really like that question. Next one is, can you share a little about what affordable grow light options you have that your plants love? Yes, I can. I actually have quite a few affordable grow light options in my home. I will link them, but um, I'll tell you the ones that I use. So in my tree lamp, which I've had for years now. Um, that has just Sansi grow bulbs in it and they're really strong, they work really well. Um, I've used that to shine light on multiple different types of plants and they've all enjoyed it. I find that they can burn though if you get it too close, so I kind of just keep it pushed back a little bit, but that's really good. Um, I also have my two different styles of clamp lamp, which are actually really good. I remember I was so surprised at how, oh, I see corms. I see corms. I was so surprised at how well my um, my clamp lamps worked. I had some of them clamped on my um, bed when I had my canopy bed frame. And then I also had one clamped on my plant wall. 
and I was using one up until recently but I don't have any up and running right now but um, I really liked those and um, new ones that I'm trying out I have some strip grow lights on my propagation little propagation shelf in the office and I'm also trying out the Burina grow lights on my new plant shelf which are also a more affordable option so oh, there's so many corms in here you guys oh my goodness and roots oh, wait there's so many corms can you see them can you see them in there oh my goodness how fun how fun i kind of want to leave them on they're like sprouting almost already i think i'm gonna leave them on because this one just sprouted and now i have a little baby in there like how cute is that so I'll leave them and see what happens. If there's any loose ones, then I'll plant them, but I don't think that there is any loose ones. Hmm. Anyways, really, really healthy looking root system on this gal, like, oh my goodness. Pop her in here. Okay, I do not feel like this pot is big enough now, now that I'm seeing this root system. No, no, no. Let's bump her up to this size. Yeah, that's gonna be better. Okay, next question that I got is, would you ever trade or sell plants to subscribers and you should give away plants, like do giveaways for plants, which um, a couple of people commented this and I have traded plants with subscribers before and like people from my Patreon and stuff. So I've definitely done that um, and I'm happy to do that. I think that that's very fun. Um, and the reason that I don't like really sell plants or do giveaways for plants, I've done a giveaway before. I did one for my 100,000 subscribers, but I didn't do plants. I just did plant related items. And the reason that I don't do giveaways with plants is because most of my viewers are in the US and it's difficult to ship plants internationally. Like it's a lot more complicated than it is just to ship plants within Canada. So that's why I um, don't do giveaways with actual plants. But yeah, I wish that it was easier to just do like worldwide shipping for plants. It'd be so fun if we could trade from different places and stuff. Canada has really strict import laws when it comes to plants. Okay, this pot looks like it's gonna be a really good size, so I'm just gonna go ahead and fill it up. I think that this allocation is really gonna appreciate this um, repot. Oh my God, I literally have to leave in three minutes. <gasps> we have to speed fill this, we have to speed fill this. Oh no, oh my gosh, I'm stressed now. I'm stressed. Okay, hello everybody. I am back and ready to sign off of this video. Thank you so much if you've made it to the end. I really appreciate you watching. Um, I guess I didn't show the finished result of the Cubria, but look at how good it looks. Oh my goodness, I love it so much. It's so crazy how just repotting can totally change the look of a plant. I feel like it looks so much bigger and more established now, even though it's literally the same size, but yeah, it looks amazing. I'm really excited to see if any of those corms sprout up too. Really happy with all of the repotting that we got done today. I am about to start with my cleanup. And speaking of cleaning, thank you so much again to Blue Land for sponsoring this video. Make sure you click the link down below in the description box. You can get 15% off of your first Blue Land kit. Like I said, I'm gonna try to do these Q&A videos every two to three months. So keep an eye on the community tab. That's where you can submit questions. I hope to see your question in the next one. All right, that's it. Thank you guys so much. I look forward to reading your comments and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.